Hi there, welcome back. It's so good to be here again. After the first episode, I got such amazing responses that I just felt I had to come back for a second one and this time to bring you a non-veg Indian restaurant and a non-veg Indian recipe. So here I am in Dempsey Hill, this wonderful place on a balmy afternoon straight after the rains and introducing you to Sammy's Curry's house, possibly one of Singapore's olden non-vegetarian restaurants. Sammy's Curry started about 1950 on Pearls Hill just behind the Supreme Court then. We are surrounded by buildings from that era, possibly 60, 70, even 80 years old. And this used to be the British Army barracks and these were just vacated only in the 1970s. I'm with Jyoti, the owner's daughter, who's going to take me through all the wonderful food we have here, especially their prawn curries, their crab curries, their squid curry, and the wonderful mutton and chicken. So Jyoti, tell me, what's the speciality of your restaurant? Our speciality is the masala chicken mm. and the curry mutton. We have sambal prawns, and this is the curry crab. Mm -hmm. Then we have some squids, yes. curry squid and black squid, and that is the fish cutlet. Yes, so that's very popular. That's very popular. And you see that also in quite a number of Indian non-veg restaurants, yes, South yes. Indian non-veg. Laos is very different. When you go to other restaurants, if you taste the fish cutlet, it's 80% uh, potato, very little fish. Fish. If you eat here, it's fully fish. How wonderful. Yes. And what's the fish that you use in this? Uh, we use snapper. Wow, red snapper. red snapper. That's an expensive and very good quality fish. That's not right. mackerel. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. What is the most important difference between, say, a meat curry, like your mutton curry, and your seafood curry? What distinguishes them in the spice mixture? Okay, the difference is that for the meat curries, we use ginger garlic paste. I see. For the seafood curries, we do not use them. So there's no ginger garlic paste no. in the fish, no. or in the prawn, no. or in the crab? Oh, that's interesting. Mm, makes sense. This is so amazing. Why do you have such huge pieces of chicken? Okay, uh, actually this has been, we've been uh, following tradition since my grandfather's time. This is the size that he used to serve. And you never compromise? You huh? never compromise. That's something I've noticed because I've been here 25 years ago. And you know, your prawns are the same size. The chicken looks, tastes and smells the same. Amazing. And you know, I can smell the curry leaf. I love curry leaf. In North Indian chicken curries or chicken korma, we don't have curry leaf. But I love this. I wonder how you make it. I give my eye tooth to come and see your cook making this. Anyway, we'll talk about that later, okay? What about your crab? Where do you get these crabs? These are flower crab, flower aren't they? Crabs, that's right. You don't use the other bigger ones. This goes down very well with your clients? Because uh, for the bigger ones, the curry doesn't seep into the meat. This seeps all the way to the right, to the center. Of the all meat. right. It's very nice. And this is the kind of crab that is used in Chetinad Chetina, cuisine, even right. in India? Even in India, yes, this is the crab. Talking of which, when Indians from the south come to eat you know, food over here, how do they react? Do they find it's just like back home? Yes. They are very surprised and happy that they can find something which tastes so home-like. Exactly here, the same. Exactly huh? the same. Considering they, you've been here three yeah, generations. And, and they are very surprised. They always tell me it just tastes how their mother used to cook back home. Wonderful. Nice. Well, I mean, I've seen how you cooked it 25 years ago and it's still the same. It hasn't changed. I 
also wanted to know who eats more squid, the Indians or the Chinese? Is it very popular with the Indian clientele in Singapore, squid? Yes, it's really popular with both. But it's not really an Indian-Indian Indian dish. dish. It's a Singaporean dish. Indian dish, I see. I notice you have a lot of citations and awards over here. That's really great. Tell me, other than me, what were the celebrities that came to your restaurant? Okay, other than you, the uh, ex-president, Nathan was here. Oh, that one, that's, huh? Yeah, that's one. Oh, that's President Nathan, that's Mrs. Right. Nathan. And who are the others? Others are my family members, my mom, my husband, my father and my brother. So your father's standing next to former president? Yes, former president. I see. Wow, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. At least six citations. Yes. And probably more to come, right? Sure. You've really laid on the entire house, haven't you? Do they really order this, all your clients? Yes, they do. In one meal? Yes, they do. Well, I guess I've been greedy too. I wanted to try out everything you have. It just looks so good. This is the South Indian style, no? Superb. So in a day, how many chickens do you cook? Uh, in a day, uh, it depends. Uh, weekdays, it's about we cook about 400, 500. Because it's in a our, day. Yes, it's because it's one of our popular, most popular. And considering you give a piece, that's this big. Yes, naturally, this one chicken just four pieces. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's really hot. <laughs> My God. That's even spicier than the chicken. Yeah, it's the most spicy item. The most the spicy. Yeah. <laughs> Cloak room will be on fire tomorrow. I have to thank you for being an absolutely wonderful hostess. It was my pleasure. I've learned so much. I've enjoyed it. I've actually enjoyed it. I don't feel this is work. And I'd love to come back here again. You're always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And here we are again with History Buzz, journeying with the Chettiars. The Chettiars, as we all know, were probably the richest Indian community among the early immigrants to Singapore. They came along with Sir Stamford Raffles when he brought his sepoys and his administrative staff and everybody from India to set up an outpost of the British Empire in then Singapore, which was mainly a penal colony in those days. The Chettiars were also a very indispensable part of Singapore when it was being built into a naval destination and a rich, prosperous commercial port. Phew, Sammy Scurry was really explosive. I'll only know how explosive tomorrow morning. I never realized Indian food could be that hot, even though I'm an Indian myself. You know, I don't think any other cuisine in India is that hot maybe except Nagaland. Phew. I've been getting so many emails from people about our first episode on the dosas. And now I'm getting people asking me, why no idlis when you have dosas? For example, Arti Varma from Delhi and Swati Gupta from Singapore. There's loads of comments. These people have been asking me, show us idlis, you've got dosas, why no idlis? So, Next time, folks, I'm taking you back to Ananda Bhavan to see how these wonderful, fluffy, steamed Tamilian cakes are made. They have an identity, Tamilian. Until then, keep eating and stay on our route, the food route. Cheers! <laughs>